Hey everyone, welcome to part three of the roll along series. Um, today we're gonna be taking care of some dash issues, um, dash bezel repairs, um, dash instrument cluster repairs, um, you know, what to look for while you've got everything apart so you can take care of several issues while you're in there. Uh, we'll go over, you know, the tools required and some of the parts that we sell on the website that will help fix some of these common issues. All right, so we've got a, we just pulled the dash from out back. Um, we've got several of them laying out there, um, but we got this out for filming purposes. So a um, little easier for you guys to see what's going on here for sure. Um, we pulled a bezel that has common issues. Um, screw holes are broke out. Um, there are some trim pieces that go across here. A lot of people don't realize that the mounting screws are behind those trim pieces so they just yank the bezel off and breaks these screws out um, another common issue the plastic stands for the wait to start light or your push button four wheel drive they'll be broken um, we'll go over a fix for that another common issue is the plastic stands for the fuel selector switch or if you have a bronco it's the rear window switch um, a lot of times those will be broke off and we'll go over the fix for that can get a new bezel by the way um, we sell them on the site for gas and diesel but if you don't want to spend the money we do have a few fixes for you know fixing these broken screw holes here um, we have this little insert kit that takes the place of the missing backing for those screws um, these are a super good kit. Um, they work very well. Pretty basic tools. Um, screwdriver. Um, these little hook sets. Awesome. Use them all the time. Um, they are very handy getting some of these plugs apart. Um, getting some of the trim off. Um, five and a half millimeter socket, quarter inch ratchet. Um, pretty basic stuff that's required to, to do all this work. So we're going to go over this fix for the uh, fuel tank selector switch or Bronco rear window switch. Um, simple. Um, these are two seven millimeter screws. Pop those out. The new bracket slides right in behind it. Put your screws back in. Uh, plug your switch in. Your, your switch will now mount to this bracket instead of the dash bezel. So if your dash bezel is broken, missing those plastic stands for the switch, this is the fix for that. They're very, very nice, solid. Um, this is the replacement panel for the wait to start light water and fuel light um, and also if you have push button four wheel drive it also alleviates that problem um, your weight start light would mount here the push button four wheel drive mounts in here um, you do have to drill a hole on this one um, essentially line up these these holes and you have to drill a hole right here and that comes with the necessary hardware a little screw and a little clip in there so um, another great fix. It takes all the pressure off of the dash bezel, especially if your um, the plastic stands are broke off your dash bezel. All right, so back to these uh, little inserts that we have for where the backings broke out. Um, simple, simple. They just fit in there. Um, comes with new screws. Drop them in, tighten the screws. They are different shapes. They can only go one way. So drop them in there, tighten the screws, and you're good to go. Okay, here we have our dash bezel in place. Um, we're actually going to pull this out, go through everything we've just discussed, um, show you the, the proper way so I don't break anything or break any more. Um, 
So let's get to it. Um, first thing you're going to want to do, step on the brake. Turn the key and take your shifter, if you, if you have an automatic, all the way down into the first gear. Turn the key back off. This is where these hook tools I was talking about come into play. Um, there's a couple little clips, retainers back behind here. This one I almost think is glued in. <laughs> so pull this piece of trim off. There's the little retainers. Um, here's our screw that's generally busted. This one is busted. Somebody's tried to fix it with a washer, um, but it has failed as well. Um, headlight switches seem to be a huge deal for everyone um, just because they don't know how to get them to release. So if you pull out your headlight switch and turn it, you'll notice that there's a slot. So there's a plastic keeper in there just reach in there with your hook tool and pull back on that retainer. There's the retainer in there. Turn your headlights back off. Done deal. Sometimes while well, somebody's been in here, um, this one just happens to be a seven millimeter over here. Most of the time they're either a seven millimeter or the T15 Torx. As you can see, our fuel selector switch is busted out. Now there's three pins across the top, one in the middle and two about in this area. So don't try and pull up from the bottom because you'll end up breaking those pins off. Generally, if you just grab it right here and pull straight back, those pins will release. These happen to be broken. <laughs> so, but once once you get those pins released, you can just wiggle it around, get it to release. Um, the weight to start light has a plug on it. Get in there with your hook tool. Well, actually, it's just a push button on that. There's the plug. Generally, if you're fuel selector switch isn't broken out. Um, you'll have to get in there and release the plug on that as well. Now on this one, you can see all three pins are broke off. Um, this bezel seen much better days. Now we have our cluster exposed. Um, we're gonna pull the screws out, pull the lens cover off, Pull the other two screws out and pull the black backing off. Now, all these gauges are just, they have push pins in the back that just press into a little plug. 
So you just pull them out. There's those pins. You just go right into these slots. That's what makes the gauges work. They can only go in one way. Tachometer. Same thing. Now your speedometer, piece on, um, it just kind of sits in there. There is a plug in the back. And also if you're an automatic, um, this is where your indicator cable hooks into as well. Um, I just kind of leave that alone. Um, there are a couple lights back behind there. Um, they may need to get to. All right, so um, make sure so these these do have a dimmer on the headlight switch so make sure your dimmer is turned all the way up so they're bright 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 um looks like those bulbs are good i have one right here that seems to be just a loose connection back there um These bulbs just have, you know, little wires. It's not a, it's not a designated socket. It's just little wires in there. So, um, before you start these, um, I mean, we get these from O'Reilly's. They're just a, a ten pack of the 194 bulbs. Um, a lot of guys will put LEDs in here. Um, a few of them are, you know, scraping off the green off the back plastic to change the color of the cluster. Um, anyway, um, you can do all the LED lights except for you do not want to do your battery light. Which in this case is this guy right here. Um, you'll see on your, on, under your tag, you got your high beam, icon, battery, brake, and ABS. So that's going to be your battery light. You do not want to do an LED light bulb in that one. Um, you do want to check while you're in here also, turn the key on, make sure all your brake, ABS, lights come on, um, you do have the high beam indicator. It's not working. There it is. And that's what a lot of times it is. It's just that bulb is loose in the socket. So we got all those lights. Can check our turn signal lights. We have a right one. And the left is not working for some reason. Um, needle nose pliers, just some shrink tube on them. Helps grip that bulb. As I talk about getting them out of there, it starts working. Just go ahead and change him out. Okay, now we got both our flasher bulbs. Turn the key back off. All right, now I take the opportunity to um, blow all the dust out of here. Just, you know, air hose. You don't want to go full bore, 120 PSI, but um, I like to just blow some of this dust and dirt out of here. All right, now we can start putting everything back together. All our bulbs are working. You'll notice that the needles are kind of askew. They'll go back as soon as you turn the key on. All right, with that being said, I like to kind of move them around when you can. 
and then turn the key on and they should reset themselves. Very tight, just snug. Um, we're dealing with, you know, 25, almost 30 year old plastic here. So, um, I've done this on a couple of my trucks. What a huge difference this little piece makes. Um, nice and clear, it's not hazy, it's not scratched from years of cleaning. Um, most people, when they get dusty, will just wipe them off while that dust dirt scratches plastic so um this is just a huge upgrade for no more than these costs i don't think they're very expensive All right, guys, we're gonna get ready to put this bezel in. Um, make sure your plugs are out. They're not falling down behind the dash. Um, I'm gonna take that bezel, kind of work it in there, be careful. Once you get it sitting in there, reach back behind. All right, now once you get it sitting in that spot, these three pins up on top, make sure you're pushing straight back on those and they'll clip in. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our repair on these. Just a Phillips screwdriver. These little repairs are pretty handy for this situation. Um, this headlight switch has a, it's a triangle shape, can only go on one way, but you just push it back in there and that tab will, will catch back on there. Um, we'll probably end up doing something with these trim pieces but those just snap right back in place. Put it back in park, get your keys off, and you're good to go. Thanks for joining us today. Um, hope that answered a few of your questions as far as dash bezel fixes go. Um, we will have links down below for some of the products we used. You can always visit our website at cpattic.com. Uh, next time we're gonna dive into those window motors, so stay tuned.